Hi, I'm Christy Kenimer with Scarlett Reagan. I'm an artist, a mom, and teacher of art courses in person and online. And I'm here with Julia Stanger. Do you want to introduce yes. yourself? Yes, so I'm Julia Stanger. I'm a former fashion designer. Um, I worked in New York City for about 15 years before moving to Dallas. Um, and I have twin girls that kind of take a lot of my time these days, but I'm also an aspiring artist. Yeah, you do a mm -hmm. lot. Yeah. You juggle mm -hmm. a lot. So, um, well, I'm really happy to be doing this. We're creating a series and I'm, I wouldn't want to do it with anyone other than Julia. She's sort of like my clone and we've gotten to know each other. We met this year. Right. right. Yeah. So it's been a crazy year. That's kind of why we're doing this, right? Yeah. Are you yes. supposed to ask me that question? Uh -huh. I don't yeah. know. I think yeah. you were supposed to ask me. Why are we why are we doing this? <laughs> why are we here, Christy? <laughs> why are we here? <laughs> right. Okay. So we're 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 here today. We're here. We're doing this. We're creating this series because it has been a crazy year. It's 2020. COVID came along. We have all had to evolve. And we think we're all craving a little more connection. And we normally do things here right out of our gallery in Dallas, but we're really getting a lot of requests for expanding and reaching out to more people. So we're doing that here with you through this video and yeah. with some of our online efforts as well. So, okay, so how are we gonna start? First, I think we need to talk about how did we get where we are right now and where are we going? So you have you had just a perfect life of all successes have you yeah. had any you know what about tell me about some of your successes and failures and your journey and your purpose i mean i think that you know i was a successful fashion designer in new york city for a long time um but eventually that started to wear on me and especially with kids and no support system in new york and we kind of we, we decided to like, you know, put family first. And that was, I think I had never seen myself as a stay at home mom. So like leaving my career was, it was, it was a challenge like to make that decision. But I ultimately like knew that for my marriage to survive and for our family to succeed, like I needed to take a step back. And so we moved to New York or we moved to Dallas when my husband had an opportunity and I stopped working, which, right. you know, when you, when you're in New York, like, so much of your self-worth is just tied to your career. It's like the second thing people ask you, like, what's your name? And what do you do? And right. then you're like, I don't, I mean, I, you know, I, right. I hang out with my kids and, and it's like an instant right. conversation killer. Right, like, right, because you need, because they want to be interested in Right, yeah, right. they want to be interested in what you're doing. So like, unfortunately, like most people aren't like so, and, I mean, obviously being a mom's so important and like, I'm so glad I've had the opportunity to do that. But I also, am to the point where like, I'm ready to start doing things for myself again right. a little bit. You know? Right. You know, that's hard because I, I experienced the same thing when I became a stay-at-home mom. I, I, for the first time in my life, had feelings of inadequacy because my value was tied to climbing the ladder. Right. And I had to recenter my, my self-worth. Mm -hmm. And to do that, it was a conversation with myself. Yeah. Really, because it didn't involve anybody else other than what I think. For sure. Me. Right. And no one else is looking at you thinking like, oh, you're only doing this. You know what I mean? Right. Like, that's just kind of like an internal. Right. Role. You know, so you you say that you you went through that journey in phases. You have the three G's that right. you say. So tell us yeah. about your. So I, I kind of labeled it as my gap year, my give year, and my growth year. So my gap year was kind of just reestablishing us, like, you know, finding where we're living, where my kids are going to school, and just like. I had worked since I was five years old, literally. Because you're... My dad owned a grocery, grocery store, store, so I, like, started from there to the ground up. And I had worked all through college, so, like, I had never taken that, like, gap year of college or anything right. like that. And, like, so, especially since I was also leaving my career, it's kind of, like, evaluate, like, what do I want to do next? But I also, like, I wanted... I hadn't volunteered in so long, so I kind of spent a year just, like, in getting engaged and engrossed in my kid's school. And there's another local, like, fashion place I volunteered for called Vickery Trading Company that works with refugee women. And so I kind of, like, volunteered there and just really, you know... Gave. Gave. And through that, I actually kind of, like, found my way back to art by helping out with my kids, like, school auction art projects. So, right. like, I was kind of, like, finding creativity through that and being like, okay, like, I want to do this in, like, a collaborative way or I want to do, like... 
like I find the joy that people are getting from this and I want to do my version of that, you know? Right. So I kind of got back into my art practice that right. way. Well, so you, you often describe yourself as a new artist because of where you've been, but I actually don't see you like that. I see you as you've always been an artist. You've just kind of pivoted what your medium is and you're just executing it in a different way now. Right. And maybe it is a new medium, so that part of it's new, but you're still living your purpose. For sure. Yeah. Right. I've always been a creative and, you know, I can't not create. Right. Yeah, so I think as long as you are always living that purpose, then it's fine, whatever you do, whether you do take the gap year or whatever. In fact, I had, I've been through a divorce and when I was in my divorce, I also, that was another period of my life where I kind of had to refocus my worth. And cause I did look at it, you kind of look at it as a failure. Mm -hmm. It shouldn't be, but that's just the way people feel when they go through it. and. At the time, someone said to me, it's okay that you're in a valley as long as you're looking up the mountain. Mm -hmm. And I carry that with me all the time and I think about it all the time, but I don't just use it when I'm in a valley. I use it when I'm feeling like I'm at the top of the mountain too because you still want to look up. Right. Otherwise, you're never going to move forward. Like you, right. You know. And I feel like it doesn't matter if you're up or down. If you're always keeping your eye on the prize and and moving in that direction, you're gonna get where you wanna go. Right. And it's about being steadfast and persevering and, and all of that. But the failures are an important part of that. For sure. And I mean, I look around at you and like, I see all the successes. Like, so we, 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 we kind of met because you said you were looking for your clone. I'm like, well, Christy does this, this, and this, and I wanna do all those things. So it's like, yes, I feel like, you know, that's kind of how we found each other. Right. But looking at all the, su the successes you have now, you know, have you had failures or like what were those moments that... No, no, never. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I have this gallery because of my failures. So there was one in particular uh, several years ago where I was going to be part of an art show that somebody else had kind of talked me into joining. It was going to be in this cool warehouse in the design district. And, you know, I'm trying to ask all the production questions, the business side of it. Mm -hmm. And they kept, you know, kind of saying, you do the art, I'll take care of the production. But when it came to the day of the show, I show up in my dress, I walk up to the show, it's about to begin. And all the people who were coming to the show were walking up to the show at the same time. So I was feeling on top of the world. It's like the red carpet. It was the red carpet. And as I'm walking up, I notice that there's fire marshals there and they had shut down the art show. So not one person ever got to go into that show. So much work goes into that too. So much work. And I immediately felt angry. Um, I immediately felt humiliation with all of the people who had cut out time in their schedule and come all this way to see me and my work. And I was embarrassed, but then we also have social media. So that just made the embarrassment exponentially worse. It was humiliation. And I was very driven by that frustration where I thought to myself, you know, if I want to do this and have an outcome that I can sit with, then I'm going to do it myself. I'm yeah. going to take matters into my own hands. And if I had had that art show that day and someone else had adequately um, created an outcome that I could be happy with, I would not have this gallery. Yeah, you just have kept doing the same. I would have kept just doing the same because it would have been, you know, right. status quo is the way to go, right? right? <laughs> so yeah, that was that failure was important, but it was also important because it made me embrace failure in general. I mean, I had had a few stumbling blocks along the way, but nothing that public. And so at that point I was like, bring it on mm -hmm. people, you know, like I'm putting myself out there. I'm not going to be ashamed of putting myself out yeah. there. It may feel embarrassing, but I'm not ashamed. I'm proud of myself. Yeah. And so well, as an artist, you have to put yourself out there all the time. I mean, like you're constantly putting yourself out there for criticism or putting yourself out there just to say like, do you like, do you like this? Do you like what I right. do, you know? Right. And that vulnerability is important, but really it's about, you know, like even like in a success, you can find, mm -hmm. you know, I had one success where I ran into someone from high school and he said to me, you must be on top of the world right now, you know, doing that 
big mural and like you're killing it you must feel on top of the world and what i ended up saying to him i was so grateful for his compliment but i said you know i'm the same artist whether i'm recognized for it or not mm -hmm. i know that i believe in my work and that's really i'm the same artist and so i i carry that with me too and i think it's an important part not just to learn from your failures but to have you know even in your successes that's not where your value is placed kind of going back mm -hmm. to where we were before is that your value has to be placed in a very special the sweet spot mm -hmm. right. you know of where you i say i believe in my art right. so right if someone doesn't get it that's on them for sure right so so yeah i'm like i'm very glad that we're here i'm so happy that we're able to connect with all the people you know we get a lot of questions mm -hmm. through instagram and facebook and we're doing all we have all these new initiatives we're bringing our bucket list art course online we're in the middle of producing that um and it's so exciting Very exciting. but you know I, do, I just i want people to feel we're all just human beings we're all in the same boat we're all kind of facing new challenges and doing things that seem impossible but we can do it and right. we have a lot of experience that we can share even about some of the earlier parts of being an artist or being a creative or even how to get into creativity in fact so we've kind of outlined what we're going to do with this series right, right. so yeah i think just sharing our journey and you know how other people can learn from it right okay so i'm going to kind of go through these topics like we're going to be talking about well i'm going to I'm going to spend a whole video asking you about your journey because okay. there's so many, <laughs> right. <Same video. laughs> I'm so curious. There's so many interesting things I could, I could hear it for hours. I mean, you've had a, you've had a really a very good, healthy journey in your life as an artist, as a mother balancing it all. So we're going to be talking about that. And then, you know, we're, we're going to be talking about, and a lot of these, these are your ideas. So I'm just writing them down and reading them and they're good. Um, creative roadblocks and rejection, how to overcome all of those things right. and turn them into something positive. We're going to talk about artistry and entrepreneurship. Because you have to have both. You have to have both. But if you want to be an artist and not have it in your career, you can compartmentalize. But if you want to have a career as an artist. Right. Because right. there is art just for therapy. And I think that's, we're here for that too. And right. that's kind of like, you know, part of the beauty of it is just right. enjoying it. Right. So th that's good. Um, and then goals. So not just goals, but how to find your purpose, how to know, know it and live it, but, and use that to create your goals and how to achieve the right. goals. So and making them attainable. Like, so it's actually something you can make happen. Right. Yeah. We all make these like lofty goals. Right. Like I'm going to be famous in 10 years. You know, it's like, no, um, art education. We're going to talk a little bit about that because we know in the modern age, there's so many options. So many options. Right. You don't have to go the regular college fine arts route. There's right. plenty of ways. Not that there's anything wrong no, with that. Absolutely not. <laughs> but well, we in the age of internet, there are so many options. More than one way to skin a cat. <laughs> right. Exactly. right. Okay. So and we have a whole list here of topics that we're gonna we're gonna be talking about. But also, what we really want is continued engagement from our followers and our right. fans and like our lab rats and you know everyone has been. I get DM'd, we get, we both get messaged all the time with questions about how did you do this and you seem like you're doing it all and no, we, we, we come back to those um, people with real answers, but we want to answer them for everybody. So, right. you know, we get a lot of repeat questions. So we're going to be going through those. So it's going to be fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited. excited. I'm excited too. Yeah. So, you know, we're new to this, but if you hit like and subscribe, turn on your notifications then I think that's what we're supposed to ask you to do. We'll be talking, what did you want me to say? We'll be talking, Jackie, what are we supposed to say? Say like, thank you for joining us. That's awesome. Yeah. We're excited thank to get started. Right, thank you for joining us. Hit like, hit subscribe, and turn on your notifications. And we look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks.